Hello, good evening. How are you? Hello, good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Okay, thank you for being on time. Uh, hopefully, we don't have. It's not raining today, right? Because yesterday, many people had problems. Um, let's see. This is the last, the last day for the first week. You see, everything, <laughs> everything was really fast, actually. Sometimes, or normally, the first week is kind of slow, but this one, I felt it. I felt it was really, really, really fast. But if you still have problems with the platform, I, I reported it today that you had this problem in 1.2, uh, question three. Try to finish, uh, or if you already finished, try to finish as much as you can. And if you have any problem with it, uh, you still have until tomorrow to finish it, okay? And you can let me know. And if you are able to complete section two, uh, you can do it right now or later. If you have any question, also we can check it uh, today. Do you have any questions for the platform or something like that? This is the problem that I reported today, so you shouldn't have any problem later. So we will try to... Uh, we already fixed or we already answered this part. We answered, well, this one is just multiple choice, so it's easier. And we finished this one also. We completed this one. So if you have any question, just let me know, okay? Today we are going to finish, uh, hopefully, we are going to finish with with the presentation. Yesterday we were talking about manners and different things. Uh, today we are going to check a little bit of pronunciation and also we are going to to have a listening so you can listen to some of the things uh, the pronunciation and also I brought a little information about about the ED right uh, I heard that some of you have some problems, but actually it's not very complicated. Probably sometimes when you're speaking, you tend to do this, but actually it's not that bad, right? I was able to listen to you yesterday and uh, you shouldn't have any problem. So we are going to um, listen to this. These are modern manners, like people talking about manners and how... Uh, they experience this in different examples. So we are going to listen. And in that way, we are going to check the pronunciation, okay? If you have any question, just let me know. Let's see right now. One moment, please. Two point forty eight. I always thought that good manners were always good manners wherever you were in the world, but that was until I married Alexander. We met in Russia when I was a student there, and I always remember when I first met him. He came to my flat one afternoon, and as soon as he came in, he said to me in Russian, Nalye menye chai, which means pour me some tea. Well, I got quite angry and I said, pour it yourself. I couldn't believe that he hadn't used a could you or a please. To me, it sounded really rude. But Alexander explained that in Russian, it was fine. You don't have to add any polite words. Some months later, I took Alexander home to meet my parents in the UK. But before we went, I had to give him an intensive course in pleases and thank yous. He thought they were completely unnecessary. I also told him how important it was to smile all the time. Poor Alexander. He complained that when he was in England, he felt really stupid, like the village idiot, he said. Because in Russia, if you smile all the time, people think that you're mad. And in fact, this is exactly what my husband's friends thought of me the first time I went to Russia, because I smiled at everyone and translated every please and thank you from English into Russian. 
Another thing that Alexander just couldn't understand was why people said things like, Would you mind passing me the salt, please? He said, It's only the salt, for goodness sake. What do you say in English if you want a real favour? He was also amazed when we went to a dinner party in England and some of the food was, well, it wasn't very nice, but everybody, including me, said, Mmm, this is delicious. In Russia, people are much more direct. The first time Alexander's mother came to our house for dinner in Moscow, she told me that my soup needed more salt and pepper, that it didn't really taste of anything. I was really annoyed. And later, after she left, Alexander and I argued about it. Alexander just couldn't see my point. He said, do you prefer your dinner guests to lie? Actually, you know, I think I do. I would prefer them to say that was lovely even if they didn't mean it. Anyway, at home, we now have an agreement. If we're speaking Russian, he can say, pour me some tea, and not say thank you when I give it to him. But when we're speaking English, he has to add a please, a thank you, and a smile. OK, very good. Um, did you understand that this uh, listening and reading? Yes. Yes. Okay, what was the reading about? Well, I understood that the different manners that the people have in different countries, for example, where well, in Russia and Russia is normal, maybe beyond polite, but or or a smile, and that's true because when I went in the US, I remember that I tried to smile to everyone. But one um, class, classmate uh, of mine told me, what, what is happening to you? Why are you smiling? Are you laughing at the people? And I was like, no, I am just want to be nice. But she told me, don't do that. That is, I don't know. So uh, she was from Haiti, I think, but... I don't know that the things that I understood not in all countries we have the same manners exactly it's different in different countries so she said that everybody was thinking that you were laughing at them yes <laughs> but you were right just trying to be nice with them yeah okay okay I didn't know that actually um in other countries right they they they, they don't say it bless you right salute right when you mm -hmm. sneeze right like in spain or we have different um different dif uh, different culture right in manners so in this case uh she was from north america or england actually and he was from russia right and this they have these these uh differences and what was uh, the resolution for these problems what was the resolution? What was the, at the end, what they decided to do? When they speak in English, mm -hmm. they have to use please and good manners. And when they speak in, I don't know how do you say it, in Russian? Russian, uh-huh. Okay. In Russian, they can avoid the, the please and thank you. Yes, they can be more direct, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Some people are like that, actually, here uh, and in everywhere. They are more direct. They don't say thank you. They don't say please because sometimes they don't think that it's necessary. But um, it is just a culture, right? Uh, like saying good, good morning, good evening, bye, have a nice trip, right? Or things like that. Some people don't say that. Um, but it's okay. Now, I just want to listen to the pronunciation, your pronunciation, right? Uh, do you need to listen to it again? And then we are going to read it or it's okay with just one time. Do you need to listen to it again? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. So we are going to listen to it. Pay attention to the pronunciation. And then we are going to read it, right? We I, I will need around one, two, three, four, five, like six or seven volunteers, okay? But we are going to play it again. Let's see. To 
point forty seven. One. I think it's for here. Be on a mobile phone. Two point forty eight. I always thought that good manners were always good manners, wherever you were in the world. But that was until I married Alexander. We met in Russia when I was a student there, and I always remember when I first met him. He came to my flat one afternoon, and as soon as he came in, he said to me in Russian, Nalye menye chai, which means, pour me some tea. Well, I got quite angry, and I said, pour it yourself. I couldn't believe that he hadn't used a could you or a please. To me, it sounded really rude. But Alexander explained that in Russian, it was fine. You don't have to add any polite words. Some months later, I took Alexander home to meet my parents in the UK. But before we went, I had to give him an intensive course in pleases and thank yous. He thought they were completely unnecessary. I also told him how important it was to smile all the time. Poor Alexander. He complained that when he was in England, he felt really stupid, like the village idiot, he said. Because in Russia, if you smile all the time, people think that you're mad. And in fact, this is exactly what my husband's friends thought of me the first time I went to Russia, because I smiled at everyone and translated every please and thank you from English into Russian. Another thing that Alexander just couldn't understand was why people said things like, Would you mind passing me the salt, please? He said, It's only the salt, for goodness sake. What do you say in English if you want a real favour? He was also amazed when we went to a dinner party in England and some of the food was, well, it wasn't very nice, but everybody, including me, said, Mmm, this is delicious. In Russia, people are much more direct. The first time Alexander's mother came to our house for dinner in Moscow, she told me that my soup needed more salt and pepper, that it didn't really taste of anything. I was really annoyed. And later, after she left, Alexander and I argued about it. Alexander just couldn't see my point. He said, do you prefer your dinner guests to lie? Actually, you know, I think I do. I would prefer them to say, that was lovely even if they didn't mean it. Anyway, at home, we now have an agreement. If we're speaking Russian, he can say, pour me some tea, and not say thank you when I give it to him. But when we're speaking English, he has to add a please, a thank you, and a smile. Okay, very good. Now we're going to read uh, this paragraph. Now that we have listened to the pronunciation, and I need a volunteer to read the first one from I always to any polite words. One volunteer, please. Rosa Maria. Okay, Rosa Maria, uh, read the first paragraph, please. I will make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I try. Okay. I always, I always thought that good manners were always good manners wherever you were in the world. But that was until I married Alexander. We meet in Rus Russia or Russia? Russia. Russia. When I was a student there, and I always remember when I first met him, he came to my flat one afternoon. And as soon as he came in, he said to me, in Russian, Nale. Mm. Mie chai. <laughs> yes, mm. mie chai. Chai? Uh -huh. Which means, pour me some, to, pour me some tea. Mm. Well, I got quite angry and I say, pour it yourself. I, could, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that, that he hadn't used a call you or a please. To you mean it sounded really rude. But Alexander explained that in Russian, it was fine. You don't have to add any polite words. Very good. Perfect. Let's see somebody else. Uh, Eliu, okay. Read uh, from some months until smile all the time, please. And then Anna. Okay. 
One month later, I took Alexander home to meet my parents in the UK, in the UK. But before we went, I had to give him an intensive course in pleases and thank yous. He thought they were completely unnecessary. I also told him how important it was to smile all the time. Okay, very good. Now, Anna, please, the next one. Poor Alexander. He complained that when he was in England, he felt really stupid, like the village idiot. He said, because in Russia, if you smile all the time, people think that you are mad. And in fact, this is exactly what my husband's friends thought of me the first time I went to Russia because I smiled at everyone and translated every please and thank, and thank you from English into Russian. Okay, very good, perfect. Let's see next one, Noel. Read uh, from another until this is delicious. Noel, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, now, yes, now yes. I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Another thing that Alexander just called understand was why people say things like, would you mind passing, passing me the salt, please? He say, it's only the salt for goodness sake. What do you say in English if you want a real favor? He was also amazing when we went to a dinner party in England and some of food was well. It wasn't very nice, but everybody, including me, said, mm, this is delicious. Okay, very good. Now let's listen to Raphael read uh, from in Russia until um, anything please. In Russia, people are much more direct. The first time Alexander's mother came to our house for dinner in Moscow, she told me that she, she told me that my soup needed more salt and pepper that I didn't really taste of anything. Okay, very I, good. Okay, very good. Let's see next one. Uh, the last one. Let's see someone else. Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, finish the paragraph, please. Uh, I was really annoyed and later, after she left, Alexander and I argued about it. Alexander just could see my point. She said, she say, do you prefer your dinner with guests than to lie? Actually, you know, I think, do. I prefer them to say that what lovely, even if they didn't mean it. Anyway, at home, we now have an agreement. If we're speaking Russian, he can say poor, poor me some tea and not say thank you when I give it to him. But when we're speaking English, he, he, pardon, he has to add and please and thank you and a smile. Okay, and very good. And a smile, very good, perfect. So do you have any question about this? or the pronunciation of any word? I have a question. I have yes. three questions. Yes. How do you pronounce argue, argue, argue? Yeah, the argue, process. right? Ar argue. So argue is, uh, is the pronunciation in present, right? Argue. And in past is argued. We are just argued. a little argued, a little D at the end. I argued about it. Yes. Yes. Next one. Uh, 
The other is uh, when it says to my flat, it's only to, when it say to my flat, what, what does it mean? To my flat. In this one or in this one? In the first one or in the second one? Uh, in the first one. The first one. It was in the first paragraph, second or third paragraph? Uh, let me see. My writing my not he came to my flat one afternoon oh he came to my flat one afternoon he came to my flat in the united kingdom they say flat but in america or in the united states is apartment oh yes so flat apartment is the same like piso piso is in europa like... exactly exactly uh -huh. okay I I I I learned a, a new word for my for my pocket. <laughs> okay. it's, it's for goodness sake. <laughs> for uh, goodness yes. Sake. I yes. Like that. For goodness yeah. sake, exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Now, what I noticed is that you you pronounce very well most of the words, but some of the words sometimes we pronounce we mispronounce it because uh, in Spanish we read everything as it is right for example if we say eh, madera we pronounce every syllable right madera but in english is different right for example i notice it in came right uh came and probably so sometimes we can read it as come but it's came right he came he said right he said a uh, russian right um also, I noticed that some verbs in past, uh, we have some problems with it. He complained. Um, and also with this one in the first sentence, we can see um, a model, right? Couldn't. Couldn't. So that would be the, the, the correct uh, pronunciation, couldn't. Uh, Alexander just couldn't understand. I know it's different. Uh, it's difficult. But try to not to pronounce the L. Could, could, right? Could. Not could, no. Could. Could and couldn't. So that would be the, the correct pronunciation. Um, I don't know if you have any other question about any other word or pronunciation. Many of them were correct, like soul, pepper, right? Pepper. Um but how are we going to know the correct pronunciation just by listening and repeating listening and repeating that's the only way right because even um, uh, native speakers sometimes they don't know how to pronounce words because the pronunciation is different so um pronunciation in english is is uh, actually very very difficult uh for someone that is not a native speaker even for native speakers as i already mentioned but many of the words were, were okay. Now we are going to talk about pronunciation about uh, past verbs, regular past verbs, right? For regular past verbs, we have three different pronunciations. It. Teacher. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I want to tell you a funny story. Uh huh. Uh, when I live in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. uh, there was a earthquake. Mm -hmm. And I feel so so scary, mm -hmm. but my neighborhood say me, oh, you are so pendejo, mm -hmm. and I I say what? I don't I don't understand. Mm -hmm. The meaning in Costa Rica, pendejo is miedoso. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the, in this moment was funny. <laughs> yes, that was that was a different meaning, right? Exactly, uh -huh, very good. Different. A different okay. meaning. Yes, actually, and also in in Argentina, that word means someone who is really young, like uh -huh. yeah. like saying "bicho" here, right? Something like that. Yes. So it had different meanings. Even in Spanish, we have different meanings. Very good. Very good story, Noel. Now, um. I was talking about pronunciation, right? So for regular verbs, para los verbos que terminan en ed, in ed, 
we have different pronunciations. It, T, and D, right? Um, it says here that normally the verbs that ends uh, they end in T or D, they are pronounced it, right? For example, wanted, needed, right? So all of those verbs that end in T or D, um, we are going to pronounce it in that way. Not wanted or needed, no, needed, wanted. Uh, the other two groups are kind of different. Um, for example, with we have two two sounds, voiceless and voice. Voiceless es que no vibra, verdad? Voiceless, no vibra aquí las las cuerdas vocales, y voice que sí vibra. For example, help. What is the sound at the end of help? It's a p, right? Like p, p. So si se tocan aquí help, no vibra. Look, look, termina con k, right? K, no vibra. K. Sniff, sniff, termina con no vibra. So all of those are voiceless sounds. And in these words, or the ones that end in p, k, f, sh, all of these, they are, we are going to have a T pronunciation. Helped. Looked, sniffed, laughed, washed, watched, kissed, danced, fixed. Okay, so voiceless, t, right? And voice, que vibra, we are going to pronounce it with a D, right? For example, call, in present, call, at the end is an, an L, una L, ¿verdad? Si se toca aquí, vibra, call. Clean, at the end is an N, right? Clean, so vibra. Offer, offer, at the end is an, like an R, R, right? Vibra. So all of those, L, N, R, G, V, Z, B, M, all of those sounds are voiced. Que vibran, ¿verdad? Son voiced. So we are going to pronounce it called, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved, used, amazed, robbed, claimed. Okay, so that is a different pronunciation. So those are the three different pronunciations in uh, past regular verbs. So let's see. Uh, first of all, do you have any questions? Preguntas? About this? No? So normally when it, they finish in T or D, want, want it, right? Need, need it. When, uh, when, the, when they are voiceless, because that is the rule, right? That would be the phonetic rule. It's a T, right? And when they are voiced, it's a D. Let's see. Um, Zulma, how do you pronounce help in past? How do you how do you pronounce help in past, Ulma? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, voiceless is T, right? With a T. So is help it, help uh, it, help. or helped? Helped. Helped. T? Very good. Helped with a T, right? Helped. Very good. Elio. How do you pronounce look in past? Uh, look. Uh, looked. Look. Looked. Very good. Looked. Exactly. Exactly. Looked. Let's see. Rafael, how do you pronounce wash in past? Washed. Washed. Exactly. Washed. Washed. Exactly. Perfect. And uh, let's see. Jose... Jovito, are you there, Jose? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Okay, Jose. How do you pronounce want in past? Want. Wanted. Wanted, exactly, wanted. Wanted, no, wanted. Very good. Want, wanted, okay. Wanted, exactly, perfect. Let's see. 
Mercy. How do you pronounce need in past? Needed. Needed, exactly, needed. So it's needed, right? Let's see with the third sound, right? With the D. Jen, uh, Nady, can you speak right now, Nady? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. How do you pronounce call in past? Call. Um, hard. Call. Hard. Cold, right? With a D at the end. Cold. Anna Maria, how do you pronounce clean? <laughs> you, were, you were so little better. Sorry. No problem. Cleaned. Cleaned. Exactly. Cleaned. With a D, right? Clean. Perfect. Let's see. Rodrigo, how do you pronounce offer in past? Offer. Offered. Exactly. Offered. When we speak fast, for example, when we are speaking normally, we barely uh, listen to that sound or uh, the speakers barely pronounce it, but they pronounce it, uh, they pronounce a little bit. They know how to pronounce it, but we notice it very little. They helped me a lot, right? They helped me a lot when they looked at me, right? So it is, um, the sound is really like tiny, let's say, right? But very good. Actually, that is, something that you can practice now. You can practice with this kind of readings. You can play it first, and then you can start practicing, right? In this case, I can listen first, and then I can start repeating, repeating, repeating. I can look for uh, the pronunciation. I can look for the meaning if I don't know an expression. So that will be just a tip for you, right? If you want to better or practice your pronunciation, if you don't, if you don't have anybody else with to practice with. Very good. Now, what time is it? 8.33, okay, let's see if we can finish it. We're going to review this uh, next week, no problem. And we are going to talk about manners also, but first I need you to, to explain to you the reported speech, right? Uh, the reported speech, we already checked this in the platform. This is the information that we have in the in the platform. It says uh, when we use reported speech, we are usually talking about something that happened in the past, right? Algo que es en, en el pasado, in the past. Therefore, verbs usually change to a tense one step in the past. So in this case, we have to be careful with tenses, right? Tiempos, tenses. For example, John said, I do a lot of homework. John said that he did a lot of homework. So this is direct speech, right? John said, I do a lot of homework. This We can find direct speech in books or uh, I don't know, in uh, we can say like that also, but normally in, in books, right? But we when we speak, this is reported speech or indirect speech, right? Like something that somebody else said. John said that he did a lot of homework. John said, I did a lot of homework last week. John said that he had done a lot of homework the previous week. So as you can see, the tenses change. The tenses change. For example, the present tense changed into past, right? For example, if I tell you, I am here. So the teacher said, that he was here, right? If I tell you I have a lot of homework, uh, so have becomes into had, right? Or has, right? Uh, the teacher said that he had a lot of homework, right? Can, the past is could, right? And will, would, right? I can speak English. The teacher said he could speak English. I will go to... The movie theater. The teacher said that he will he would go he would go to the movie theater. With would, we don't pronounce L, right? In this modal verse, we don't pronounce the L. No pronunciamos la L en estos uh, verbos modales. Could, would, that is the pronunciation, right? Could, would, could, would. Very good. Now, uh, also, um, 
these uh, words, they change right here, there, this, that, these, those, today, that day, tonight, that night, yesterday, the day before, last week or last month, the previous week or the, the week before, tomorrow, the next or the following day, or next week, next month, uh, next week or next month, right? Or the following month. Exceptions to the rule, no tense change in general truth, no tense change in immediately reported speech. And also commands in reported speech, right? Don't, for example, if I tell you don't do this, uh, the teacher told me not to, right? Becomes a not to plus infinity. I have an example here. The doctor told me not to drink alcohol for a week. So told me not to drink alcohol for a week. So at that moment, the doctor say, hey, don't drink alcohol. Don't drink alcohol for a week at least, right? So if I'm telling you this at you, so the doctor told me not to drink alcohol for a week. We have more examples there, right? Mom said, clean the kitchen in the morning. Julia asked me to buy some cookies for the kids. So this is all reported speech, right? Told, said, asked are very common verbs. And also we can use it with object pronouns, right? Mom told me to clean my hands. Pamela asked the doctor to send her results. And the teacher said not to use the phone in class. Okay, something that I need you to tell, uh, I need to tell you is be careful with the verbs uh, tell and say, right? And also ask. Uh, why? Because in reported speech, we are going to say, we are going to use them a lot. She told me, she said, right? Um, remember that, as you can see at the end of this slide, it says, don't use an object pronoun with say. Maria said me. No, never, right? She said me or he said me. No. Maria said to go home, right? Maria said to go home. So no utilizan el object pronoun. Me dijo, we tell, right? Use an object pronoun, we tell. Maria told me, correct, right? Maria told me to go home. And ask, we can use with that verb also an object pronoun. Maria asked me to go home. Maria asked me to go home. So as you can see, don't use say me. She say me, he say me, because I listen uh, to that a lot. And that's because we are thinking in Spanish. Eso es porque pensamos en español. So don't, don't uh, think in Spanish, right? These are the rules in English. So in reported speech, be careful with that. Uh, do you have any question with reported speech? Well, yes, I have a question with um, uh -huh. like two sentences uh -huh. of the first um, homework. That is the point one. 1.8, the knowledge knowledge shape, check, sorry. I don't know the number four and the number six. <laughs> and the platform, right? Yes. Okay. That will be the last one, the listening exercise or the uh, reading No, no, no. The, the point knowledge, one. Knowledge, 1.8. Exactly. Yes. Okay, let's see. Yes, reported speech is kind of difficult. Uh, yeah. Which one? <laughs> oh, the number four and the number six. Number four and number six. Number four says, why aren't you talking? She asked me why I wasn't talking. Hi, teacher. Sorry, I'm super late, but I have just left my job. I just left my job. Okay, very good, Porfirio. No problem. And six, we're getting married, she told me. She told me they were getting married. So that is uh, present continuous, right? We're getting married. So we were getting married. They were getting married, actually, right? Okay. 
Yes, it's kind of difficult. Actually, it's, 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 it's kind of because you need to manage or you need to uh, to use in a very good way uh, all of the tenses. So that is difficult. Okay, do you have any question about this or the, the, the report speech? Any other question? La aplicación de Teams, y ahí te acabo de pasar mi usuario y, y, este, y, mi, y mi contraseña. Oh, so Entra como para. Let's see. Okay, if you don't have more questions, just remember this, right? These are the tenses, no right? Yes, go ahead. Uh, in my case, I don't understand uh, uh, when, when used to say or tell. Tell. Okay, who is speaking? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, if it is possible, mute your microphones, okay? Um, okay, when we are going to use tell and say, right? Yes. Actually, it is it's very difficult this stuff. Whenever you want to, cuando usted quiera. Eh, because uh, we can use say or tell, but it, es como decir, right? Say and tell, right? Actually, I will send you a, a video um with say and tell but in this case uh whenever you want to she maria said to go home it's very similar uh to say maria told me to go home but what you don't have to say is maria said me that is incorrect maria said me no maria told me yes maria said to go home when we use say cuando usamos say we just say we just uh use what we what she said right only maria said this right maria said that right but with with tell we can use an object pronoun maria told me me dijo verdad told is decir tell maria told me to go home and also with ask maria asked me to go home it's okay but it's similar the meaning is similar so you can use it whenever you want to there is no rule like you're going to use say only with this right or tell only with that no there is no no rule like that the only rule is that you you have to be careful with the object pronoun okay okay thank you okay no problem so as i was saying um also you have to be careful with report, reported speech with tenses right um for example this one the simple present right i have homework to do then the simple present goes to simple past, right? Marie, Mario told me that he had a uh, homework to do. That can be omitted, right? El dad lo pueden omitir si ustedes quieren. Simple past to past perfect, right? Past perfect to uh, past perfect, right? Present continuous to past continuous. Present perfect to past perfect. Will would, can, could, may, might, must, had to. You must take the test. The teacher told me, told us that we had to take the test, right? So those will be um, the tenses that, the changes, right? We have a lot of examples there. Do you feel ready to practice this? Yes, right. Okay, we will try to do something here. Yes, Rosa Maria. Sí, disculpe que le hablo en español, pero quisiera que me quede bien claro. Solamente uh -huh. cuando utilicemos say es que no podemos utilizar mi o cualquier pronombre. Ajá, uh -huh. cualquier pronombre, uh, uh, pronombre que lleve un objeto, la object pronoun. Por ejemplo, uh, no diga, uh, nosotros en español decimos ella me dijo a mí, ¿verdad? Ella me dijo a mí. Uh, entonces, si se confunde, usted tell, but she told me, she told uh -huh. me, she told me. Pero si usted say, no utilice she said me, solo utilice lo que ella dijo, ¿verdad? Uh, she said that, or she said, y diga lo que ella dijo. Pero si ella, usted quiere decir, ella me dijo a mí, she tell me, or she told me, right? Ah, ok. Okay, okay. Entonces es como que el say, ella, ella dijo. Ella, ella dijo, ajá, ella dijo esto, ajá. 
Y ya con el otro es, ella me dijo. Me dijo a mí, ajá, a mí. She told me. Ajá. Ah, ok. Thank you. Ok, very good, no problem. I understand that it's kind of difficult, right, but it's ok. We are going to have a practice now because we need to practice this. Uh, we are going to have a review of this also. Uh, manners and also um, reported speech. We will have more exercises. But I need to hear you now. We still have 15 minutes. Probably we'll be able to, to check some of these. If we don't finish, we are going to finish in um, uh, on Monday, right? Because tomorrow we don't have classes. So we have a conversation here. We are going to work in trios. Why in trios? Because sometimes some people cannot use the microphone and it's more likely if we speak in trios that we can participate a little bit more, right? And we don't, we won't have this kind of problem. So what are you going to say in this conversation? You are going to ask you among you uh, this, what does politeness mean to you, right? In your culture, what are some common ways of showing politeness? And you can answer some of the, some of these, right? Some of the uh, questions. Or for example, uh, I will ask Ana Maria one, two, three, and then I will ask Mercy four, five, six, and they can ask me seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? But I want you to provide information. Then you are going to come here and you are going to use the reported speech to tell me what they say, right? What your classmate said. So we are going to do this right now. I uh, will stop. I will share this in the group. Esto lo voy a compartir en el grupo de WhatsApp, okay? Ahorita. Let me see if I can do it here. Okay. I will share it right now. Advance. Okay, so you have uh, the questions in the group right now. And I will make the groups trios, right? Let's see. Okay, perfect. So I will open and you will have around 10 minutes for you to speak about this, okay? Try to write the responses. Escriban las respuestas, okay? De lo que le digan sus compañeros. Let's go. You can join right now. Hi, teacher. Hello, what happened? Uh, no, it's that it's no one only is here, right? <laughs> yeah. Even though if I, yes, there are some people here. Let me see here what happened. 
Okay, Jose Jovito should be here and also Jensi, but Jensi didn't join. Jose Jovito, can you speak right now? Jose, can you can you listen to me? Yes. Okay. I have you. Okay, perfect. So what you have to do is just to just to answer the questions, right? You have 10 minutes and write the responses, okay? Okay. Okay, okay perfect. You. you can share your screens if you want to. Uh, I, I send the questions to the WhatsApp group also. You can find them there. Okay, you can start speaking. Yeah, I'm trying to upload the photo right here on chat. Okay, there is on chat. The, the activity. Okay, perfect. So what we have to do is to start, uh, just answer the question, right? Yes, exactly. Just answer the questions. For example, um, uh, Porfirio, what does politeness means to you, right? What does it mean to you? Ah, politeness for me is this, this, and this. Okay, try to, um, if it is possible, try to write the answers, right? Because I think that won't be able to, to finish the activity. We will finish it on Monday. So if you write it, that's okay. No, okay. Okay, go ahead, please. Hello, do you have any problems showing in the groups? Yes, no? Okay, if you have any problems, you can uh, speak. Uh, Rodrigo can speak with Jensi, right? And just try to answer the questions, if it is possible for you, okay? If you have problems with your microphones, I understand, no problem. Yes, could be. Um, uh, if you say someone, hey, you can sit here and you can stand up, I think it's a way of showing your politeness. Yeah, uh -huh. yep. Another example? Maria uh, Susana? Yes, I think uh, in our culture is very common to say greetings when we uh, are in any place on the bus and uh, say hello in, to anybody, right? Yes, it's correct. Um, can you uh, read the number three, please? Anyone? Okay, have you ever experienced a situation where someone was impolite to you? How did it make fee you feel? Every day. <laughs> yes, uh, I can uh, explain an uh, example. For example, when you are driving um, uh, and many times the politeness uh, is very difficult for other people, right? Because in the traffic, uh, and, uh, each one wants to weigh why are driving. Uh, I don't know how to say in the solving. Maneja uno in the solving. So how do you how do you make you feel? You feel bad, so is uh when a teacher may, may uh, really bad by the way, um, cause he didn't 
give me permission to get into a class that late. Uh, that was my bad experience. Okay. Do you think being polite is important in the workplace? Why or why not? Claudia? Okay, I think, yeah, it's very important in every place uh, because, well, is the, like, uh, the, mm, I don't know how to say that, but, well, I think it's very important because uh, it's like uh, the main plate or something like that. And the people, well, it's most important in workplace. Why? Uh, because, well, uh, you need to show the best way of you. Yeah. And most important for the, the job, the, the boss and all that. And also when you manage to your customers and all of that, that way I think. And you guys? Yeah, um, for me, uh, I have two, I have a, I have two words, to be polite or hypocrite. I don't know how to say in English. I hypocrite, I think. Hypocrite. Because sometimes if you be polite if, if somebody is doing a bad uh, work in, in, in our workplace, we need to be sincerely with them, with him or with her, because you are wrong, but try to say in a good manner. That is my point of view. And what about you, Nady? Um, I think it is always important uh, to have good manners as it op open doors and opportunities in life. Yeah. That's good. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for practicing a little bit at least. Um, we almost finished the class, and that's why I brought you back, right? Probably on Monday, we will be able to finish this exercise because I need you to tell me the reported speech of the responses that you that you had from your classmates. So I guess that you were in question four or five, most of you. So we are going to finish this exercise on Monday. We are going to create other groups. And at the end, I will ask you, okay, what did they discuss? What did they say? And try to use the reported speech to tell me like um, any of the questions that, that you answer in this conversation. Okay, and no homework for Monday. Actually, just try to investigate the topics for section two and try to um, try to finish section two if it is possible for you, if you have time and if you have any problem with the exercises, just let me know. We are going to finish this exercise, this activity on Monday, okay? We are going to review the, um, the reported speech. We are going to listen to a conversation and also we are going to finish this, this exercise. Do you have any questions right now? Preguntas? Uh, it, in the in the in the section one point three, mm -hmm. I had a I had a question about an answer mm -hmm. because I felt that it was a mistake in the in the platform, mm -hmm. but I don't know is. Yes, I guess it's in 1.8, right? 1 1.3, 1 1.3. 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. Yes. yes. It's in this one? Yeah, the, the, the number three. Yes, it is true. Yeah. 
Yes, actually I reported it today. Ahora lo reporté. I reported this because it is incorrect. Even though if I write the correct response, it's, it's incorrect. So actually there's something wrong with the platform. But I reported it today and probably they will change it on Monday. But okay. just try to fix or try to complete the rest of the exercises, okay? I okay. already reported it. Thank you very much. Should I have a question? Yes, go ahead, Jose. Uh, in this exercise, uh, we have to use commas uh, because I all the answers are wrong for me. All of them? Yeah, I I write in like your screen mm -hmm. and. Yes, for example, um, in the first one, you, you don't use to use commas, but you need to use period and everything has to be like this, right? For example, in the first one is, it's appropriate to talk about politics at work or school. And the answer is talking about politics at work or school is inappropriate. So if you want to, I can show you the answers here. And this is like, the responses, right? We did this on Tuesday, I guess. But it, it has to be like that. Only the third one is incorrect, but I already reported it. But okay. It, uh, yes, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, the number three, uh, I know, is the state of the platform, right? Yes, it's a problem with the platform. Uh, okay. So, well, I can... The, the note about that. Yes, exactly. If you have any problems with anything, please let me know tomorrow and I will try to help you, right? Because tomorrow at 11, I guess that is the last uh, hour for you to to set to, to submit this. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you. Uh, I wish you to have a good, uh, good weekend and I will see you on Monday, okay? We will keep on practicing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have, have a, a nice good evening. Good night, night. teacher. Bye. Bye. Have a nice evening. Good night. Good night. Good night.